In this problem we have a bracket, and the bracket's designed to withstand a force that acts directly to the right. So for example, if I tied a rope to the bracket and I pulled it straight to the right, that's what we're after. So if there was just one rope, we would just pull directly to the right. However, instead of there just being one rope, we'll have a series of three different ropes. The first two ropes are under tension acting to the upper right, and we'll say that the tensile forces on both ropes are F1 and F2. And if we were to calculate the resultant force of these two ropes, the resultant force would effectively act somewhere in between the two vectors, pulling to the upper right on the bracket. But that's not what the bracket's designed to do. With the third rope, we'll have to angle it down and to the right to make sure that our resultant force acts directly to the right. So here's our third rope acting down and to the right. So what we're after is a vector sum, I'll draw it in red here, that acts directly to the right, and we'll call this FR, the resultant force. And just keep in mind that this resultant force is not a fourth rope, it's just the vector sum of all three of the ropes. And let's say we know the angle of all three of these. The angle of F1 above the horizontal is 60 degrees, and the magnitude of F1 is 50 pounds. The magnitude of F2 is 75 pounds. And the angle of F2 to the upper right is 25 degrees. And we'll say that our third rope is acting below the horizontal at some angle theta. And we'll set theta for the first part of this problem. We'll set theta equal to 50 degrees. And we want to figure out the magnitude of F3 such that the resultant force acts directly to the right. So we'll make this a two-part problem. In the first part, we just want to determine the magnitude of F3 if we know that theta is equal to 50 degrees. And in the second part, we want to make a graph of the magnitude of F3 as a function of theta if theta ranges from 5 to 90 degrees. So for example, here's theta equals 5 degrees and theta equal 90 degrees. F3, this rope would be pulling straight down. So let's begin the problem by establishing some coordinate axes. And remember, you can put these axes in any orientation or location that you want, as long as it's a right-handed axis. And I'm going to use the common notation i and j hat for the x and the y directions. And this is a right-handed axis. If I use a right-hand rule x crossed y, I've got the z axis, my thumb, coming out of the screen. So let's use the fact that the resultant force is the vector sum of f1, f2, and f3. And for all three of these vectors, I'm going to break them into their component form. So I'll do F1 first of all. And we have in the i hat direction, it's equal to 50 pounds times the cosine of 60 degrees in the i hat direction. And in the vertical direction, in the j hat direction, I've got 50 pounds times the sine of 60 degrees. And I'll also break F2 into its component forms. And I'll write out F3 in component form. That's equal to the magnitude of F3 times the cosine of theta in the i hat direction minus the magnitude of F3 times the sine of theta in the vertical direction. Now I'll also write the resultant force FR in vector notation. And it has a magnitude FR acting only in the horizontal direction, so FR times i hat plus 0 in the vertical direction, so 0 times j hat. Now what I'm going to do is write two different equations based on the magnitudes of the vectors in the horizontal direction. So the sum of these three terms will equal the magnitude of the resultant force. And my second equation, the sum of the three vertical components, will have to equal zero because we know our resultant force must act to the right. So I use the label i hat to indicate my first equation. So I've got 50 pounds times the cosine of 60 degrees plus 75 pounds times the cosine of 25 degrees plus F3 times the cosine of theta. And the sum of all three of these will equal the magnitude of the resultant force. And I'll do the same thing for the j hat direction. The sum of these three terms has to equal zero because it acts only horizontally. So let's count up the number of equations and the number of unknowns. We've got one unknown is F3. Theta we know is 50 degrees for this part of the problem. Our second unknown is FR. If I come through the second equation, here's my first unknown again, F3. And again, we know theta. So I've got two equations for the i and the j hat direction, two equations and two unknowns. And when I solve for those two equations, I find that the magnitude of F3 is equal to 98 pounds, and the magnitude of the resultant force, Fr, is equal to 156 pounds. 
So here's a solution for the first part. We found the magnitude of F3 and the magnitude of the resultant force. This means physically is if we consider the material in the bracket itself, if we do not include the material in the ring, it means that we could get rid of, as far as the bracket is concerned, all three of these ropes, and we would replace it with one rope acting to the right, directly to the right, with a force of 156 pounds. As far as the bracket is concerned, these two loadings are equivalent. So let's go on to the second part of the problem where we want to make a graph of the magnitude of F3 as a function of theta. So what we want to look at is theta ranging from 5 degrees down to 90 degrees. And if I simply looked at the equation, if I rearrange this expression and I solved for F3, what I would find is I would have the sine of theta in the denominator. And if theta was a really small value in the denominator or a large value for F3, and as theta approaches 90 degrees, the sine of theta would approach 1, and we would see a mathematical expression that would look something like this. Now physically, if I tie my rope over to here, if, for example, let's assume theta was 0, the third rope acted directly to the right, the force wouldn't be defined, first off, because the sine of 0 is 0, and that's in the denominator, and it would suggest an infinite force. But another thing to think about is if this rope acted horizontally, there's no component of the force to eliminate the upward component of F1 and F2. So if this was horizontal, we would always have a resultant force that acted just a little bit to the upper right. And if I take FR and I pull this rope downward, if I pull it all the way down to 90 degrees, I would need much less force to counteract the vertical components of F1 and F2. So it's always important to think about the physical significance of your equations and whether or not the results make sense. And here's a quantitative graph of my results. When theta approaches 0 degrees, we see that F3 would have to become infinite to make the resultant force act to the right. And as theta increases towards 90 degrees, the resultant force decays to a smaller value. And to double check the accuracy of this graph, in the first part of the problem we had theta is equal to 50 degrees. So 45, here's 50, 50 degrees. And when I read to the left, I read off the graph something close to 100 pounds. And what we found at the beginning was that F3 was equal to 98 pounds when theta was equal to 50 degrees.